Do you know that certain foods can actually speed up the fat burn, aka your weight loss? Certain foods help us release hormones that tell the body, release the body fat, we don't need the extra. And certain foods tell it, hold on to it, it's not the time to release the body fat. Each bite that you eat is like a piece of code, like computers have zeros and ones and get all the information in those codes. That's how our body gets information on which hormones to release, which ones to hold on to, should it release body fat, should it hold on to it, and so much more. This is why what we eat is so much more important than how much we eat. And I know you've been told to count calories, you've been told eat less and move more, but those are really a lie. It's really not about the calories, and that's a topic for another video, which I will make soon. It's about the effect that the food that you're eating has on your body. Because by giving it certain foods, your body behaves differently. So today we're diving into top seven foods to eat to lose weight, aka burn fat, and to improve your health. Because these foods send the information to your brain to release the right kind of hormones, and do the right thing so that the body doesn't store body fat, but rather burn it for energy. And if you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Lex Spooko, nice to meet you. I have been in the health and wellness industry for 20 years. I have struggled with weight a couple times in my life and everything I've learned, I've used on myself to get myself healthy and in a body that I love, which now at this point, I've helped hundreds of women get in shape and stay happy with their bodies. And now I share all of that with you on this channel. So without further ado, let's talk about the seven foods you want to eat more if you're wanting to lose weight and improve your health. The first one on the list is good old salmon and sardines. I know we all hear how awesome salmon is and it's really, really fantastic. Wild caught that is, not farm raised, but also we fail to mention how amazing sardines are for us. Salmon and sardines, both packed with omega-3 fatty acids, boost your metabolism and promote fat burning while you're providing a high quality protein to also support your muscle growth. And remember, when we're talking about weight loss and fat burn, we cannot forget about the muscle and muscle building because we all wanna be lean and toned. And it's the muscle building that give us that toned look. Because it's fish and because it can be a little higher in mercury if you eat it every day, once or twice a week is a very good way to start. If you want to up your omega-3 fatty acids, which I do highly suggest, you can take a good quality omega-3 supplements. I'll let you know which ones I use. Please do your own research because you can find really bad or really good supplements marketed about the same way. Also, if you're using canned sardines, please make sure they are in olive oil, not vegetable oil. Next thing you want to incorporate more of is colorful veggies. I want you to think in colors of three or more. And here's why vegetables help you. They are rich in fiber, they are low in calories, they fill you up and keep you satisfied, which reduces the overall food or calorie intake and promotes weight loss. Now, I find that people get bored with veggies because we go to the store and we buy the same all cucumber and tomato and onion, and then we just get bored and we don't eat our veggies. So here's how you can shop to actually make sure you're eating your veggies and enjoying your food. When you enter the grocery store, buy what you haven't bought in a while and or buy what you don't even know what it is. Try new things. I want you to also think in colors of three or more. So if you're new to this, maybe three is overwhelming, get down to two, but always think in colors. Yes, green leafy veggies are the best for us, but once again, it's better to change things up and eat different veggies than to go for what we perceive as the best veggie and then we get bored with it. And again, when you are choosing things that you have never tried before, you're opening your world to new possibilities. And I'm notorious for that. I go to the store, I don't even know what it is. I used to post things on Facebook and ask people, what is this and how do you make it? And that is how I found, for example, rutabaga, which I now love, which by the way, you can eat raw or cooked, it's awesome. You can also look up programs in your neighborhood where there are sometimes local organic farms that deliver food to certain locations and they actually deliver the seasonal vegetables. This way you're also changing colors and you're going according to the seasons. 
Next thing you want to add more of is things like kefir, which is just a little bit better than yogurt and sauerkraut, things like kimchi, things that are fermented foods. If you prefer to drink it, kombucha is the way to go. And how do these foods help you? Well, they are probiotic rich foods that enhance gut health, they improve digestion and help regulate metabolism, which makes it easier for your body to burn fat. Our gut health directly influences how our body behaves, how much body fat it holds on to, how happy we are. 70% of all serotonin in our body, the happiness hormone is produced in our gut. Healthy gut bacteria that you get through fermented foods not only improve digestion, but also heal a leaky gut, which is like a subject for another time. But just the term itself tells you that's not what I want to have. Very simply put, leaky gut obviously leaks toxins back into your body. And we don't want that. So we have to feed the right bacteria in our belly. You can have these foods every day and you need just a bit. So a spoon or two per day is fine, especially if you don't like these foods. Because remember, whatever you're forcing yourself to eat, it's just not going to work. Also a tip on kefir, if you can't find it, buy yogurt, that's perfectly fine. Please do not buy the yogurt or kefir that has fruit added to it because it also has a ton of sugar and sometimes color added as well. Buy kefir or yogurt plain and then add your own fruit. Add your own local honey, make it per your taste. The effect is very different than buying those that already have sugar and fruit added to them. And if you know yourself and you're like, I'm just not going to eat these kinds of food, I do suggest getting a prebiotic supplement as a suggestion. You have a probiotic and a prebiotic. Probiotic is basically all the healthy bacteria we want in our belly. Prebiotic is the food for that bacteria, the fiber that that bacteria thrives off of. And if you can, I would do both. I would still eat more of the fermented fruits and eat more fiber rich foods. If you feel like you're not getting that enough in nutrition, get both probiotic and prebiotic. I personally just take a prebiotic myself because I love kefir. Next thing you want to eat more of are things like nuts and seeds, obviously in moderation. The way they help you burn fat is they are high in healthy fats and protein and they keep you feeling full longer, which reduces the urge to snack and helps you again control how much of something you're eating. Now here's a few tips. Ideally you're eating them raw. Seed and nut butters are okay, but I prefer if you would buy and then make your own or at least check the ingredients that there are no other ingredients added but those nuts or seeds. Now, one more important note on nuts and seeds. Don't mix it with anything sweet because when our taste buds taste sweet and fatty and even with a pinch of salt, it's like we just can't stop eating it. That's why in nature you don't have things that have both. So when you're eating nuts, please don't add M&Ms. I hope that's obvious, but even things like raisins because that can make you overeat these things. Just get a handful of nuts or seeds and you're done. And a fun fact, peanuts are actually not nuts, they're legumes. They're also known to have mold within them, whether it's where they're grown or in the storage, and this is why people have so many allergies these days. Obviously, it's a personal choice if you'll eat them or not. I used to be the person that could not live without peanut butter before, but now I've switched to only nuts and seeds, and then I grind them, I add them to the food processor and make my own butter should I want to. What about you? Are you a peanut butter fan or not? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Next thing that you want to eat more of, especially when you're cooking, is things like coconut oil, olive oil, grass-fed butter, ghee, avocado oil. Those are the oils that you want to use in your food. Remember I just mentioned I make my own nut and seed butter. I add coconut oil to every one of those. How they help is because these healthy fats boost your metabolism, reduce inflammation, they create and provide long-lasting energy, and all that helps in fat loss. MCT oil is fantastic as well. It's derived from coconut oil. I love to add it to my tea in the morning, and that way I don't break my fast and I can make it longer. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to use vegetable oils or margarine. These things create a havoc in your body. They create inflammation, and your body will not release body fat if you eat a lot of these. 
And even though when you're buying these oils, it may seem that they're more expensive than things like vegetable oil, the thing with margarine or vegetable oil is it goes really quickly. So may, even though it seems like you're paying up front more for things like avocado oil or grass-fed butter, you are doing good for your body and in the long run, you're actually saving money. And even if at this point you're like, oh my God, this is so overwhelming. I don't even know what recipes to make. I do have a recipe book. You may want to check it out. All my recipes are like five ingredients or less. I'm a lazy cook. So if you are someone who doesn't like to spend time in the kitchen, you may want to check it out. I'll leave the links in the description. Okay, the next thing you want to eat more of are things like blueberries, goji berries, and mulberries, if you can find those. How they help? Well, they are nutrient-dense berries loaded with antioxidants. By the way, mulberries have even more than blueberries. And all of that helps fight inflammation, stabilize blood sugar levels, and prevents fat storage. I used to eat fresh mulberries when I was growing up, but in the U.S. I couldn't find them anywhere and I used to get them. I believe it was actually a big lots that I used to find the dried ones. They are still super yummy. Please always check the ingredients. You want mulberries to be the only ingredient. If you're trying to save a buck or you live somewhere where you don't have those fresh, frozen berries are perfectly fine and they are a great treat. And I'm finally listing something actually more on the sweeter side for you, so hopefully you can indulge into that. You can also add them to smoothies. There's so many different things that you can do with them. The next thing I want to talk about is quail eggs. These eggs are rich in protein and essential nutrients. They're even more nutritious than regular eggs. They can help build lean muscle mass. They support metabolic functions. They enhance the body's ability to burn fat, and they bring you a ton of nutrients, of vitamins and minerals. They can also be eaten raw, even on an empty stomach. But if you don't like that, mix them with food or cook them. They're smaller, they're a great snack to eat. Obviously, if you cannot find quail eggs or the price is just ridiculously high, regular eggs will do good, but I always encourage you, go locally. Ideally, you don't wanna buy them at the store. Ideally, there's a farm or fresh market around you. Oftentimes nowadays, little farms actually deliver to certain locations or maybe even deliver to you. I'm sure you can even find them at the local farmer's market. And before I connect the dots to show you how to easily put all of this together that we talked about into your daily nutrition, why don't you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification so you get notified every time a new video comes up. These new series are coming specifically for weight loss and improvement of health. So if that's what interests you, hit that subscribe and let's go on this journey together. Okay, so now I listed all the foods and you're like, oh my God, I don't eat any of this. How can I actually incorporate this? If you approach it like a diet and you go buy all these foods now and eliminate everything you're eating so far, it is not going to work. And remember, you have to enjoy your food. You need to make food per your own taste. This is also why I prefer making the food at home is because then I can make it to exactly how I want it. So if none of the ones that I have listed make it to your plate, please slow down and start slow. Pick one or two of these and incorporate slowly those into your daily nutrition until that becomes a habit. Also a note on spices. Not only that they're healing and healthy, but they add so much flavor to your food. There are plenty of stores that sell spices. I love the savory spice store where they have like over 500 different ones and you can come in and smell and taste each one of the spices. And here's a list of my favorite spices that I get and pretty much use all the time. For the salty ones, I use sea salt, turmeric, pepper, curry, cumin. For the sweeter ones, I use Saigon cinnamon, cloves, anise or star anise, ginger, and nutmeg. And again, if you're not familiar with any of these, please pick one and start slow. And as you know, it's not just about what you do eat, it's also about what not to eat when you're wanting to lose weight, burn fat, or just get better health. And I do have a separate video on what not to eat and what to substitute it with, and you can watch that here. 